Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again. This is Trace. This is a podcast-style show. We cover a whole bunch of different things about one topic over five episodes. And this week we're talking about survival. This is episode two of five on survival. Yesterday we talked about the history of human survival, like what survival really means and how it sort of has shaped who we are today. But today we're gonna talk about how humans adapted to living in a completely different way than we did when we first started. Back in ancient days, and I do mean very ancient, like back when we were still more, had more in common with primates, we were living in trees. Now, humans living in trees had different things to think about when it came to their survival, but at some point, we decided to leave the trees. Perhaps we were getting too populous, or it was time to spread, or perhaps a human just got it in their head that they wanted to get out of there. Australopithecus came down out of the trees between three and a half and 4.2 million years ago. We know this because we looked at the wrist bones of Australopithecus and found that they were more adapted, not from swinging to tree to tree, but they started to get adapted to live in other areas. We were learning to adapt to survive and our offspring were becoming better at it. As we moved out of dense forests and onto plains, we started to see this happen in our family tree so to speak. Uh, Gabriel Macho, who is the lead author of a study on this, it was published in Philia Primatologica, says, with trees being further apart, it became energetically advantageous for hominids to cross the gaps bipedally. Now, if you don't speak science, they're basically saying it was better for us to walk than to swing from tree to tree. So we started walking. We had to learn to walk to survive. We came down out of the trees for that reason. And when we were walking, of course, at some point, we're gonna try and find another place to live. And a few million years later, that ended up being caves. Neanderthals lived in Eurasia's limestone caves between 200,000 all the way up to about 30,000 years ago. And those Neanderthals were living there because it was much nicer than living out in the open. Throughout time, of course, humans still live in caves all over the world. And not uh, what you may be thinking is what you see on the news sometimes, but we're talking an actual you know, comfortable living in caves. Uh, I can't pronounce this name very well, but Darren Kuyu, it's an underground city in Turkey, uh, thought to shelter 20,000 people via 13 stories underground. That was 3000 BC, pretty comfy. Although today still, 30 million people in China live in caves and people live in caves throughout other countries as well. And by the way, it's not because China is like communist and they're having trouble with their economy. This is, Caves are soundproof. They require fewer building materials than building a traditional house, and they're sheltered from extreme weather. Some of these caves, you can look them up online, go look them up, are like crazy upscale apartments. But they're living in caves, and we still do this. And to do so, we had to adapt to new ways of living. Some of those ways ended up learning to build fires and warm those caves, and also learning when to go outside and when not to go outside. Ancient houses and huts were kind of our way of bringing those caves with us. Some of the first huts were made of earth. We would just build our own cave. And Homo heidelbergensis built shelters between 700,000 and 200,000 years ago. And they were just really, really simple stuff. Just kind of like these mounds, usually. But some of them, as we got better and better at it, were made out of wood or rock. And perhaps cavemen weren't strictly cave dwellers after all, and these overlapped at some point. This, of course, uh, in the journal Science, they studied this. They even made shelters, they found, from mastodon bones during the Stone Age. So we were learning to adapt and survive as we spread across different environments through different weather patterns, which brings me to one of my favorite inventions, uh, clothing. It's thought about 170 years ago, ancient men started to wear clothes. And in doing so, we started to adapt to an even wider variety of changing climate and weather patterns. They figured out that 170,000 year number by looking at lice, by the way, because lice started living on humans underneath their clothes. They had this new way of surviving. And in doing so, we ended up kind of being hosts for them and they evolved in kind. By wearing clothes, we learned to survive in places that previously would have been too cold for us when we were naked. So they could go into cooler climates, they could move into higher latitudes. And it wasn't that we invented clothes because of an ice age, by the way, that's not 
that's not real. Instead, we wanted to push the envelope. We wanted to move farther away. We wanted to explore and we wanted to spread. Perhaps there were too many people back where we had come from. It might not have just been a desire of curiosity, but we're human. It's possible that that was that. The people who invented clothes wanted to conquer new lands. They wanted to go somewhere. They were looking out of their cave in the wintertime and they're thinking, I don't want to sit in this damn cave. I want to go outside. So they figured out a way to do that. This meant more people could survive in a greater breadth of weather conditions because we invented clothing. We learned a better way to survive. And another way that we learned to survive is creating agriculture. Between 15,000 and 10,000 years ago, agriculture was created. And it actually happened in a lot of different areas of the world independently. It just, conditions were right. And it kind of bloomed out of all of these different groups of humans. And it's easy to say that we became agricultural and hunting and gathering disappeared, but we were doing both. Some people were agricultural, some people were hunting and gathering. We were just doing both, and hunting still does exist to this day. It just wasn't the best way to survive anymore. And that's important because survival changes. The values of how to survive change. What is important to your survival will change, which brings us to today. Cities and communities are a very different place from caves, trees, and plains. The very first cities were founded in Mesopotamia after the Neolithic Revolution or Agricultural Revolution, which was around 7500 BCE. Agriculture is believed to be a prerequisite for cities because you need to be able to grow food somewhere and then they needed to be able to go and live in their cities. And that helped production and it helped create economies of scale and helped people kind of all live in one place and be supported. Cities also reduced transport costs for goods and people and ideas by bringing them all together in one spot, which also helped survival because then we could also think about how our survival would impact each other. Over time, cities became social, they became governmental, they added education and industry, and all of these things furthered our survival. By 1800, only 3% of people in the entire world were living in what we would consider a city or urban area. Today, it's more than 50% of people on our planet live in an urban area. The UN estimates that that's gonna grow to 67% by 2050, so we're gonna have to adapt to survive in a city. Or maybe we already have. We're surviving now in a very different way than we ever have in history, in giant urban areas. But what does that even mean? Find out tomorrow on Test Tube Plus. I think it's safe to say that innovation has definitely made human survival possible. Throughout all this, we learned to make clothes, we learned to live in caves, we learned to not swing from tree branches and walk around. And leading innovation today is the US Air Force, which is powered by airmen, fueled by innovation. And thank you so much to them for sponsoring this episode of Test Tube Plus, episode 205 on survival. Make sure you watch yesterday's episode and tell us down in the comments, do you think that you could live in a cave or in a mud hut? Anything like that? Where would you want to live if you weren't living where you live now? Tell me in the comments. Subscribe for tomorrow's episode of Test Tube Plus, where we figure out if urban areas are really the best idea ever for survival. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.